Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us for the inaugural session of the International Conference, Connected Histories, Shared Present, Cross-Cultural Experiences Between Latin America, the Caribbean, and India, which the India International Center, Delhi, is convening in collaboration with the Indian Council for Cultural Relations. Um, the, this conference uh, convener was is Professor Sonia Surabhi Gupta of Jamia Millia Islamia, uh, with the mentorship of Ambassador Vishwanathan. So uh, our inaugural session is, uh, is being uh, chaired by our president of the Indian International Center, Ambassador Shyam Saran, and the keynote address is by Dr. Jorge Volpi. Um, may I request the director, uh, Shri Ken Shivastav, uh, to for his welcome remarks, just uh, two words of introduction. Uh, Shri K. N. Shivastav has had many important posts, including uh, Secretary and Financial Advisor in the Ministry of External Affairs and Secretary in the Minister for Civil Aviation. Before joining as Director in 2019, he was a member of the National Disaster Management Authority and thereafter a judge in the Central Administrative Tribunal. Sir? Honorable Ambassador uh, Shyam Saran, President, India International Center, Honorable Trustees of the Center, Dr. George Volpe, Director, Center for Mexican Studies, Dr. Sudha Gopala Krishnan, Executive Director, India International Center, International Research Division, Excellencies, Distinguished Scholars from Latin America and the Caribbean countries, Scholars from India, Ladies and Gentlemen. India International Center was set up in 1962 with prime object to promote understanding and enmity between different communities of the world by undertaking or promoting the study of their past and present cultures, by disseminating or exchanging knowledge thereof, and by providing such other facilities as would lead to their universal appreciation. Ever since its inception, ISC has been organizing activities to promote academic and cultural exchanges between scholars from India and abroad. These endeavors have contributed towards broadening and strengthening India's cultural bonds with many countries across the globe. Through its International Research Division, the IAC has been organizing international conferences focusing on continents and selected themes. The deliberations at these conferences are published in volumes they act as research materials to the interested scholars. This conference, Connected Histories, Shared Present, Cross-Cultural Experiences Between Latin America, the Caribbean, and India, which is jointly organized by ICCR and IIC, was conceptualized by the late, the late Dr. Kapila Vasayan in the year 2020, when she was helming the IIC International Research Division as its chairperson. We remember her and pay this tribute to her on this occasion. About 20 scholars from Latin American and Caribbean countries, besides an equal number from India, would be participating in this conference and presenting their papers covering varied areas like social sciences, humanities, diplomacy, trade and industries, development studies, media, etc. My colleague, Dr. Sudha Gopalakrishnan, would be presenting a detailed introduction to the conference. On this occasion, on behalf of India International Center, I extend a very warm welcome to our President, Ambassador Chamsaran, and all our honorable trustees who have guided us in organizing this conference. I welcome Dr. Jaws Volpe, Director, Center for Maxim Studies, who has very kindly agreed to deliver the keynote address today. I welcome my colleagues from Latin American Division of Ministry of External Affairs and ICCR, Ambassador Vishwanathan, and acknowledge their contribution in holding this conference. I welcome all the scholars from Latin American countries and also the Caribbean countries and India who would be participating and presenting their papers in this conference. A very warm welcome to their excellencies, the ambassadors of Latin America and the Caribbean countries, but for their unstinted support it would not have been possible for us to organize this very important conference. I welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, and to each and everyone who has been directly or indirectly associated in organizing this conference. On all the three days of the conference, in the evening, 
we have organized cultural programs drawing artists from India and uh, LSE countries. I am sure these cultural programs would be immensely liked and enjoyed by everyone. We have also arranged an excursion tour of Taj Mahal and other historical monuments in and around Delhi and Agra for the participating scholars from the LSE countries. We hope that they would enjoy it. We look forward to a very constructive and meaningful discussion at this conference. We are sure that the conference would generate ideas that will bear fruit in academic and artistic collaborations and the new avenues for international cooperation. I welcome you all once again. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, I now request our chair and the president of IIC, Ambassador Saran, for his opening remarks after just two lines of introduction. Uh, Ambassador Sham Saran is a former foreign secretary of India and has served as the prime minister's special envoy for nuclear affairs and climate change. Uh, after leaving government service in 2010, he headed the research and information system for de developing countries and was chairman of the National Security Advisory Board uh, under the National Security Council. Um, his books include How India Sees the World and How China Sees India and the World, which was published last year. Thank you, sir. Our uh, keynote speaker for this evening, Professor Jorge Volpi. Have I got it right? Uh, our life uh, trustees, uh, distinguished life trustees, uh, Shri N.N. Voraji, also former president of the India International Center, uh, Shrimati Meenakshi Gopinath, life trustee, and uh, Professor Anil Shashrabude, our trustee in the board of uh, trustees. Uh, <coughs> Excellencies, uh, heads of missions of uh, Latin American countries present here and also Caribbean countries uh, present here. Um, distinguished participants in this uh, conference, all are uh, scholars who have come from many distant countries and we are very thankful to them for having made this journey to be together with us. Um, <coughs> my colleague uh, K.N. Srivastava, who is director of our a center, uh, Mrs. Uh, Sudha Gopala Krishnan, head of the uh, International Research Division of uh, the India International Center, and also uh, Mr. K. N. Wali, Mr. Wali, uh, who is also secretary of the India International Center. Her distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as uh, my colleague uh, uh, Mr. Shivastav has pointed out, uh, this particular uh, conference has been uh, a few years in the making. Uh, we actually conceptualized this uh, some time back and uh, we have already paid, uh, you know, uh, expressed our thanks to Ambassador Vishwanathan and some other colleagues who helped us conceptualize this uh, conference. And we have been in touch with a number of uh, uh, ambassadors from Latin American countries to see how, we th how we this, we, this could be put together. Uh, this is, as I said, was a few years in the making and was actually something which came up, uh, you know, as a suggestion from uh, Srimati Kapila Vatsayan, who was the head of the International Research Division. Uh, we unfortunately uh, lost her uh, a couple of years ago. But I'm very thankful to Sudha for having, uh, you know, taken up the mantle and uh, made this a reality. So we are extremely happy to see that uh, we have been able to put this uh, together. Uh, why did we think that this kind of a conference is important, uh, both for India and for Latin America? Uh, well, you know, here are two, uh, I would say, uh, you know, entities which are perhaps the most diverse in the world. Uh, they comprise numerous languages, they comprise uh, different kinds of cultures, traditions. Um, they have indigenous populations who have such a deep connect uh, with nature. 
um so there are so many strands which really bring india and latin america and caribbean countries together with the caribbean countries we have an additional uh, link we have a large number of our countrymen who in the years past uh, you know went and settled in these uh, countries and they have become a bridge between india and uh, the countries of the region so there are many strands as i said that connect us uh, together and uh, these strands um, you know every now and then need to be celebrated uh, every now and then we need to renew those connections and take this uh, uh, forward um as i said uh, there is uh, both in latin america caribbean countries and in india uh, there are um, you know i think uh, in terms of aesthetics in terms of uh, literature in terms of you know arts uh, you see a certain sensibility you see a certain aesthetic quality uh, which uh, again i would say uh, have deep connections with one another and uh, i think you see this also in the kind of fascination which uh, some of uh, latin american poets and artists have had in india um in fact one of india's great painters uh, uh, satish gujral um actually you know went to mexico and if you see his paintings uh, you will see how much of an impact uh, his uh, his uh, you know stay in mexico made uh, on uh, his his uh, art, art, art artistry uh so there there is there is uh, as i said every reason uh, for us to really celebrate uh, this uh, uh, relationship and um, uh, if we look at the world today uh, as i said this conference has been interrupted because of the pandemic and uh, the kind of uh, you know uh, disturbance that i brought in all our lives uh, and we are picking up the pieces but while we are picking up the pieces we are beginning to face uh, some other challenges you know what's happening uh, not very far away uh, in europe nobody thought that europe would see another war but yes it is seeing another war um whether or not we have a stake in that conflict the fact is that all of us are being impacted uh by that conflict because the world has become so globalized because you know we have become so interdependent and yet that interdependence seems to be not really something which is being taken into account by the major powers in the world uh, so is there something that we can do uh in order to try and make the world a better place make this uh, more peaceful less conflict driven because uh, we have such an important stake uh, in that uh, world so this is another reason for us you know uh, as as people who have an a, a great stake in the future of uh, uh, of the world uh, to really come together uh, lastly i would say uh, you know the whole challenge of uh, climate change and uh, you know the ecological crisis that the world is uh, confronting today and here also you see how in dealing with this challenge uh, how latin america and how india will be crucial partners you know just look at the amazon what <laughs> impact uh, it has uh, not just uh, for the fortunes of brazil but uh, with respect to you know the entire world uh, similarly a decisions which india takes today with regard to for example its energy security tomorrow will also have an impact not just on india but in the world Uh, and as i said you know one of the great things that we find both in india and in latin america is the role of as i said the indigenous people in our in our region uh, they deep connect with nature and how much they can teach us about how we should live live in nature how we should really uh, treat nature as a source of nurture uh this is this is something that we we can derive the wisdom that we can derive uh from them so i would like to end with um, with a quote from uh, davi kopinawa yano mami who's shaman and spokesperson for the yano mami people in brazil uh who won the right livelihood award in 2019 for his courageous determination to protect the forests and biodiversity of the amazon and the lands and culture of its indigenous people he said we have kept the words of our ancestors inside us for a long time and we continue to pass them on to our children 
children who know nothing of the spirits hear the songs of the shaman and later want to see the spirits for themselves this is how despite being very ancient the words of the sapiripe are always renewed it is their words which augment our thoughts which make us see and know things far away the things of the ancients this is our study this is what teaches us to dream and this is why someone who doesn't drink the breath of the spirits has short and murky thoughts so i would hope that some of this spirit will really pervade the conference that we are going to have in the next couple of days and with those words uh, it is it is really my uh, privilege to invite uh, dr hohe uh, folpi uh, to deliver his keynote Uh, address but i think before that uh, if, sorry um i have to uh, call on uh, sudha to please introduce the conference and then we will ask our keynote speaker to speak thank you thank you so much sir um dr sudha goparakrishnan will give an introduction to the conference she is executive director of the international research division of the india international center and has been active in research policy and management on indian arts literature and culture among others she was founder director of the india's national mission for manuscripts and steered sahipedia an online encyclopedia in indian culture and has published many books on the performing arts and literature of kerala and on literature in malayalam and sanskrit dr goparakrishnan greetings to everybody ambassador sham saran president india international center mr n n vora trustee life trustee india international center mr k n srivastava director india international center dr jorge volpi keynote speaker and renowned mexican novelist and essayist and also director of the unam center for mexican studies in spain a uh, distinguished delegates of the conference connected histories shared present cross cultural experiences between latin america the caribbean and india distinguished ambassadors of countries from latin america and the caribbean tr life trustees of the iic director general indian council of cultural relations our co-host for this event professor sonia gupta conference convener an expert on latin american studies ambassador vishwanathan and ambassador deepak bhojwani experts on latin america and also ambassadors to latin american countries esteemed guests collaborators and colleagues at the iic greetings to everyone once again actually i joined mr shivastav in warmly welcoming all of you to this inaugural session of the conference on this uh, conference on connected histories shared present cross cultural experiences between latin america the caribbean and india it's an auspicious day today because it marks the culmination of a long held aspiration this was a conference in the making for like uh, more than 2 years I, i should say as mr shivastav mentioned the seed of, and also ambassador saran the seed of this conference was sown 2 years back or more by the late dr kapila varsyan a visionary art historian scholar and erstwhile president of the iic who also steered the international uh, research division for several years it was her desire that we organize this dialogue because she felt that it gives an opportunity for two cultures far flung from each other in space to come together and understand each other's past and present and influence each other's common concerns needless to say in this conference we are aspiring to cover a vast ground when we are talking about latin america the caribbean and india we are referring to broad and variegated regions of the world that mr ambassador sham saran was just talking about diverse culturally rich regions their cosmologies geographies histories perceptions about nature and the environment knowledges and practices not merely through the lens of the past but how they impact resonate and inform the present rather than making sweeping comparisons between latin america the caribbean and india across civilizations what we are trying to do with this conference is to build a bridge like rama the hero of the epic ramayana had done through the sea route to reach lanka his destination we are trying to understand the values that inform the shaping of identities across time and space 
the dynamics of evolution through histories, social movements, and ways of life. To give an example, records of experiences around contractual labor give us insights when we talk about how cultures have adapted and reshaped themselves when a sizable Indian diasporic community developed in the Caribbean. There are accounts of how Indians who migrated to the Caribbean countries, such as Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, in the late 19th century have struggled to keep up with links, keep up links with Indian traditions, assimilated and adapted to local cultures, produced new forms of art. I think all this will be uh, 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 discussed, I think, in the, con in the sessions that follow, which found expression in festivals and ritual celebrations, cuisine, music, dance, and how they have in turn influenced and continue to influence Indian music and film as a reciprocal effect. In India, while we are aware of the long history of contact and Latin America's goodwill for India through appreciation and influence of Gandhian thought, yoga, and aspects of culture, we are also conscious how India came under the powerful impact of the poetry of Octavio, Octavio Paz, literary trends like magical realism, subaltern feminist movement, and other, other such movements. Recent years have seen a visibly increased engagement between LAC and India at the political level and in trade and commerce. What has also attracted many Indians is the contemporary culture of the region, marked by vibrant social movements, assertion of indigenous and gender identities, hybrid urban spaces, all of which find expression in the rich and diverse literary, intellectual, and cultural landscapes. All this and more will come under discussion in the, uh, during this conference. The International Research Division is organizing this conference as part of a larger program of, of orchestrating dialogue between India, Southeast Asia, and cultures near and far. There have been intercultural exchanges between Africa, Southeast Asia, Japan, and Iran. And I'm happy to say that it is for the first time in this scale, perhaps, in the India International Center, that this kind of a significant encounter is happening between India and Latin America Caribbean regions. Uh, as we have said in the concept note, we seek to take one step in bridging our cultural gap, explore uh, hitherto uncharted territories, and seek to build on, build on the goodwill between us. So, this conference takes a broad view to give insights across the rich and diverse cultures and other dimensions of life. As emphasized throughout, it is about connections. For connecting, two entities have to come together, understand each other. In, se in these sessions, we trace the civilizational, historical, literary, artistic connections, examine the reception and influence of Indian intellectual traditions, and finally, also what is pertinent to us in the context of today. We have followed a format where each session leads to the other organically in terms of the history of ideas and thought. The first session on the first day discusses exploring the civilizational landscape, social and cultural panorama of Latin America, the Caribbean and India through the ages, focusing on the civilizational aspects of the regions and will deal with memory and memoirs of the, from the past continuing through the present. It will look at cosmologies, myths, and beliefs of the people, linguistic, cultural, and ethnic diversities in an, in an attempt to understand how these regions reckon with their past and in shaping their own identities. The second session, Navigating Through History, Probing Contacts Between India and the Caribbean, is exclusively on the Caribbean region, focusing on the long history of interaction between the two areas. The third session in the afternoon, Building Bridges Across the Oceans, Literature and Languages from India, Latin America and the Caribbean in Conversation, looks at what has been and still continues to be the power of literature to influence and forge cross-cultural connections and continuing the same theme. The fourth one looks at the diversity of visual and performing arts through these regions. The theme for the first session on the second day is Reception and Influence of Indian Intellectual Traditions in LAC, focusing on the broad areas of philosophy and culture, ideas of peace and nonviolence, and the impact of Indian systems of thought in the, in the LAC. The next one, Contemporary Cultures in India and Latin America, discusses the current scenario 
with transitions in a post-Western world in domains ranging from political transitions, information technology and business, diaspora, cinema and youth cultures. This will be followed by a panel discussion on common challenges and concerns where the attempt would be to frame our present conversations and concerns as world citizens. It will look at development models and the possibility of an alternative civilizational vision in the context of the recent experience of the COVID-19 pandemic. We are delighted that Dr. Jorge Volpi, the famed novelist and essayist with command of over Hispanic philology and with a teaching career spanning several universities is our keynote speaker today for the conference. We look forward to his lecture. There is also a panel of scholars and domain, there is a panel of scholars and domain experts from Latin America, the Caribbean and India represent, uh, representing the themes laid out for the conference. We anticipate a fruitful time and lively exchange of ideas for the next few days. This conference, like was it was mentioned, was originally supposed to happen last year, but our planning was thwarted by the pandemic. We are anyway gratified that now it has come together in a felicitous manner, and we are grateful to each and every one of you for being with us on this occasion. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Gopalakrishnan, for introducing the whole design of the conference and really whetting our appetite for the next two days. Um, we're very privileged to have with us Dr. Jorge Volpi as keynote speaker. He is director of the Center for Mexican Studies at the National Autonomous University of Mexico. He's the author of 15 novels, including a trilogy spanning the 20th century, of which In Search of Klingsor retained some cult status, and uh, one of his, I mean, his many publications, and one of his novels, a criminal novel, inspired a Netflix documentary series. He's published essay collections as well as a play. In 2008, he received the Jose Donoso Award for his body of work and the Medal of Order of Isabella the Catholic of Spain. He's a Knight of the Order of Arts and Letters of France. His books have been translated into 30 languages and he's received grants from the Guggenheim Foundation and been professors at the University of Emory, Cornell, um, Las America de Puebla, Católica de Chile, and the National Autonomous University of Mexico and Princeton. So. Namaste, good evening. Thank you very much for being here with us. Dear Ambassador Shiyama Saran, dear Ambassador Federico Salas from Mexico, Professor Sonia Surabi Gupta, and Professor Sudha Gopala Krishnanan, thank you very much for this invitation to India. Uh, I'm really, really excited to come again since my last uh, trip 10 years ago, and when I first came here, just invited to the IIC also. Uh, I develop a true love for India, so I'm, I'm really, really excited and happy to be here today. Uh, you must forgive me, but uh, I'm going to start this uh, lecture with the first verses of a poem by Octavio Paz that's, that most of you must know E even by heart, but I can't resist the temptation of reading here these verses from uh, this poem from Octavio Paz in Spanish and then starting the lecture. So, quieta, en mitad de la noche, no a la deriva de los siglos, no tendida, clavada como idea fija en el centro de la incandescencia, Delhi, dos sílabas altas, rodeadas de arena e insomnio, en voz baja las digo. Well, I'm going to talk not about poetry exactly, but about uh, fiction and politics in Latin America that are always entwined. 
So the title of this lecture is Latin America Resurgence. One, Latin America, first of all, does not exist. And if the region does not exist, neither can Latin American literature. More than a decade ago, when I published El Insomnio de Bolívar, Bolívar's Insomnia, an essay on the politics and culture of the region, I was convinced of this statement. Little by little, the enormous fiction that we tend to call mistakenly or imprecisely Latin America had gradually vanished into thin air, following in the words of Sigmund Maumann, the liquid impulse of modernity. Everything that we had until the end of the 20th century proudly identified with this region had begun in one way or another to be diluted or even lost. Even as the concept derived from the rivalry between France and Spain, it briefly illuminated Bolivar's dream of the possibility of keeping all the Spanish colonies united after their respective independences and persisted until the early years of the 20th century when Latin American culture began its prodigious explosion. However, it was from the 50s especially that the idea of the fiction of a Latin America capable of collecting or uniting its different national identities was articulated with greater force. While the Cold War split the rest of the planet into two, different revolutionary forces promoted the concept of the Third World, and with that, within that, Latin America occupied a paradigmatic place. The mere fact of sharing the same language and the same religion, at least in theory, coupled with a unirectional reading of its history from the conquest to these years, forces us to think that Latin America really exists, both in opposition to other parts of the planet, in particular to the United States and Spain, and in preserving, in a sense, a single soul despite its political divisions. If the second half of the 19th century and the first half of the 20th century turn Latin America into a kind or early laboratory of nationalism, and each country insisted on differentiating itself from its neighbors, sometimes through bloody battle, battles and in other cases through the articulation of prejudices and borders, in the 20s and 30s of the last century, some spirited thinkers and politicians spoke for transferring the whole idea of national soul into the entire region. That is to say, under this fierce local nationalism sits an even more powerful current, that of Latin America. What is this fiction made up of? Of a dose of history and of political desires. After a century in the attic, the dreams of a new Latin America unity is revived, coupled above with all cultural manifestations that seem common to the entire region a mixture of native and European traditions that produce a vibrant and attractive concoction of mutation. It matters little, then, that authentic contacts between the inhabitants of each nation are minimal. Music, literature, art and cinema cross borders and inspire a desire for community that also works as an antidote to the evils that are shared universally. Obscene inequality the corruption or inefficiency of an unscrupulous political class, absence of justice and rule of law, and underneath it an exacerbated racism and classism, obstinate legacies of the visceral era. As if that were not enough, the entire region suddenly found itself subjected to a new imperialism, which placed it without anyone being asked with the US capitalist orbit in the division on the globe marked by the two superpowers. In this situation, the margin of political action became restricted. Any local experiment was immediately destroyed by the drive and resources of the United States, which would only tolerate nationalist regimes 
that themselves obviate any socialist or communist drift. If not, they would support and impose fierce dictatorships at their service, which spread from one end to the continent to the other until the end of the 20th century. Culture then, and literature in particular, become substitutes for an impossible political unity. The elites write in Spanish, and this language mutates and adapts and assumes itself as their only vehicle of expression. The middle of the century saw writers everywhere beginning to recreate both the present and the past of their centuries, and seen as a whole of the entire region, and the readers everywhere began to recognize them as their own. This first generation that is perceived and read already as Latin American, with Borges and Orrulfo as epitomes, is followed by another which will soon acquire the equally, misle equally misleading nomenclature of boom, with explicit claims of Latin Americanness as a mark of identity. The boom, or at least its paradigmatic writers, Carlos Fuentes, Gabriel García Márquez, Julio Cortázar, and Mario Vargas Llosa, suddenly become spokesperson for Latin America as they seek to recreate it in their works. Their novels are condensates of the contradictory and vital culture that surrounds them, and very soon they embrace the revolutionary ideal that permeates the region. Praised in the United States and Europe, they revolt against them using their own weapons, a surprising amalgamation of formal experimentation here to the avant-garde and rapidly Latin American themes. The sudden success of García Márquez, whose masterpiece is voraciously read all over the planet, goes even further and condenses all previous efforts in a lavish mixture of fantasy and history, lyricism and chronicle. Magical realism, a misnomer by excellence, invents with Macondo a new Latin America, a place that is both mythical and concrete, where all the contradictions of the region coexist and multiply. In its pages, this uncertain Latin American space exposes all these vices, its corruption, its racism, its insanity, its irrationality, through a prodigious, intensely tropical language, full of nuances and echoes, which inevitably becomes deeply exotic, the measure of its success. 100 years of solitude defines the only way to be Latin America for a couple of decades. And not only for that, the only way to be a global writer coming from a third world country. Copies of the model proliferate everywhere, making magical realism an inescapable mannerism. Latin America, and really any poor country, can only be described as magical, subjected to a logic that inevitably escapes the rigid and predictable Western canons. Thus, the fiction from Latin America finds its perfect crystallization. We are all Macondo. We are all subjected to that fearful history, to the bullpen who govern us, and to those small miracles that save us day after day. Towards the last decade of the 20th century, just when the Berlin Wall and the Soviet Union fell, and the ferocious bipolarity exploded into neoliberal globalization, the nationalism implicit in the fiction of Latin America began to flounder. As new writers here, there, and everywhere started pointing out, perhaps the metonym Macondo Latin America no longer serves to define us. Perhaps the time has come to devise new fictions about the identity of the region. The opposite occurs. In the last year of the millennium, Roberto Bolaño, whom I dared to call the last Latin American writer, drives the nails in the coffin. Yet just like the authors of the boom, he recognized himself as Latin America. He was a Chilean with a Mexican past and a Spanish present, and his entire oeuvre 
is a dialogue with the tradition and its fictions, even if it is as it simultaneously closes off the possibility of continuing with the model. Their followers can now only be spuriously Latin America. In the midst of a ferocious capitalism that takes the center everywhere and the periphery is nowhere, Latin America becomes little more than a registered trademark, a tourist label. At the beginning of the 21st century, writers hardly feel Latin American anymore, or they do so without it inspiring and they have read writers from the past. Compared to previous epics, everything turns towards intimate, autobiographical stories that fence off the shores left behind by their predecessors. Despite globalization, or precisely because of it, readers of each country have neither access not to not or nor interest in those of their neighbors. A new atomization isolates them in a paradoxical era that sings of the freedom of the markets. And so, little by little, the great fiction of Latin America fades to the point of becoming almost impossible. What does it mean to be Latin American today? Is there even a possibility that we can continue to talk in the second decade of the 21st century of Latin American literature? Two. Latin America, at least the archetypal Latin America, the one we had gradually invented and consolidated for more than a century, was vanishing before our eyes. The truth was, I insist, that everything solid melted, melted into thin air. The old Cold War polarity, which in some sense made us feel so safe, so comfortable in our center certainties, was opening instead to an absolutely interconnected single planet and a unique way of thinking. Slowly incubated in, since the 60s, put into practice in Great Britain and Chile, a particular authoritarian experiment, which started in the 80s and finally became not only the dominant, but I repeat, the only ideology from the 90s onwards, came to alter previous values. It is not that the left and the right had suddenly disappeared, but the later, the clear victor of the Cold War, took it up with such force and conviction that it ended up contaminating its former rival, who, in its social democratic incarnation, or third way, as the English New Labour members called it, ended up embracing it without a whimper. Latin America, which has been, had been, in spite of itself, one of the battlefields of the Cold War, had been torn apart in the feud between its ferocious dictators and its no less bloody guerrillas, who champion, almost without realizing it, the actors of the global battle. Once it was no longer necessary to guard the region from any communist meddling, because the Soviet threat and its Cuban ambassadors had vanished, the region opted for urgent democratization. The age-old dictatorships and authoritarian regimes fell one by one, only Cuba once again resisted, and the region modernized in a flash. That is, it adopted alterna alternation and the division of powers while putting into motion the agenda, the agenda of privatization and liberalization of the economy imposed by the United States and the new international authorities. The myth of the free hand of the market spread voraciously among its elites, while a rapaciously individualistic spirit completely displaced any old community ideal. In this new context, where the market was the only important thing, the idea that literature should be used to change reality was packed off of the trunk of old curious. Committed writers gradually retired, and the very idea of politics, so linked to corruption, went out of fashion. And so, while Europe insisted on becoming one, Latin America forgot the journey driven by the boom and fixed itself obsessively on Spain, 
which in the heat of its entry into the European Union, became the only publishing center for the Spanish language and a forced dream of Latin American writers who had to pass through there to reach, if at all, other countries of Latin America. Suddenly, there seemed to be nothing authentically Latin American about most of the novels and short stories published by Latin American writers at the dawn of the 21st century, who had already stopped reading primarily Latin American writers of the past to focus on the English translations that edited and translated in Spain flooded their bookstores. Paradoxes of globalization. In any bookstore in Mexico, Buenos Aires, or Bogota, it was, and to a large extent, still is easier to find any author or bestseller originally written in English than an author from Guatemala, Bolivia, or Peru. The void of the critical mass of Latin American fictions, the new generations were already inspired above all by American or European models. If Carlos Fuentes could locate one of his stories in Colombia, Vargas Llosa in the Dominican Republic or Bolaño in Argentina or Mexico, none of his followers would have thought of something similar. In contrast to their epic themes, interest shifted towards intimacy or the historical novel or an increasingly commercial nature as well as the last embers of an increasingly predictable and annoyed anodine magical realism. Latin American literature became a mere place in bookstores, a mere shelf in bookstores, and sometimes not even that. A piece of information on the flaps that referred only to the author's passport, but in no way to the content or the content of his fictions. Nothing united its authors beyond a language whose policies were decided more and more obviously in Spain. In those early years of the 21st century, nobody could have imagined that the resurgence of Latin America could come hand in hand with the immense problems that the long-awaited democratization of their countries was not able to solve. An overwhelming inequality, with one main location, the one reserved for women, and a disproportionate increase in violence and corruption. Odebrecht, the war against drugs and the inveterate machismo of its countries would force, for the second decade of the 21st century, the reinvention of Latin America and its fictions. And three. Unanticipately, Latin America is reborn from its ashes, proving that it is a resistant fiction capable of adapting to difficult moments, of hibernating for seasons, and then being reborn. Of course, the Latin America of this third decade of the 21st century is not identical to the one that prevailed throughout the 20th century. And its literature, that kind of mark of identity, is also no longer so. It is, in any case, an extreme mutation, a fiction that is only vaguely reminiscent of his predecessors and whose equilibrium or persistence still leaves much to be desired. If Latin America has been reborn, it is not due, however, to the efforts of his politician, nor to populists of various hues, nor to a new wave of authoritarian rulers, nor to the new wave of the left that has cornered its rivals and has, and has tried to become a bridge with one that prevailed 20 years ago. The renewed Latin America is born rather from a global rearrangement, from the urgent need to find new footholds where everything had vanished or become liquid. Unfortunately, the region maintains some of its usual hallmarks. It continues to be the area of the planet with the highest 
rates of inequality. And although extreme poverty has been reduced, the multiple forms of violence in the region accentuated even more. In literary terms, we are not very far from the boom. We are very far from the boom. There is no identitarian project. There is no aspiration to a mystique, nor resting on the old myth of Bolivarian unity, in which no one believes anymore. Generalizations are despised as much as groups. We are rather faced with a Latin America that exists precisely because of its plurality, or in some sense, because of its intimate ruptures. With the death or retirement of the great figures of the boom, as well as Bolaño, there are hardly any visible heads and no one looks for a guru or a regional conscience in them in any case. Instead, a few hopes have been seen a few easily unraveled nodes, a few imprints in an ever-changing fabric. If we have had to identify some of them, we should highlight the rise of women writers. Yes, at other times they were just as notable, but the prevailing machismo in the region was responsible for silencing or belittling them. Today, on the other hand, those who were unjustly forgotten and read and reread, and at the same time, new spaces have been opened for women writers, whether they touch on gender issues or not. An oasis in a literature that has otherwise always stood out for its patriarchal character. Secondly, the spotlight is on uh, something that has always been silent in Latin America the detailed chronicle of its inequalities and violence written in a realistic key. We see narrative approaches to the old problems oscillating between fiction and non-fiction, and perhaps the latter has achieved a privileged place with brilliant journalists, reporters and chronicles, who often risk their lives for their stories, or novelists who have moved onto their terrain. Fantasy, on the other hand, has eluded magical realism to reinvent itself from its most classical side, and in particular, with new articulations of horror. Some have baptized this current that draws on mystery and the supernatural as neo-Gothic to expose social or historical problems. It is hardly surprising that most of its practitioners are women in the trail of Mary Shelley. To this we must add a certain boom in autobiography and autofiction, memoirs and novels, and a mixture of both that try to show the marks of history in the short histories of their authors, who in almost all cases feel the need to look at the fiction defended by previous generations. Alongside these notes, which claim to be artistic, flourishes a thriving commercial literature, sometimes difficult to distinguish from, let's call it, author, in which there is a proliferation of detective stories, romantic novels, traditional historical novels, and above all, an explosion of youth literature, often written by those, some young people, to whom it is addressed through platforms and fan fiction collectives creative on that purpose. And one last point. In a world that has oscillated brutally towards the audiovisual and the participatory, Latin American writers, like those from other parts, have not been able to avoid becoming regular protagonists of social networks, booktubers, influencers, Instagrammers, and TikTokers, while a good part of them earn their income by putting themselves at the service of the audiovisual sector with the collective and somewhat anonymous writing of scripts for movies and, above all, television series. Will this upturn of Latin America and of Latin Americanness last, or will it be just another fad? 
Is there something significant that can be called Latin America in these creations? Or is it just another ghost that will soon dissolve again? Hard to say. In any case, it would seem that this new boom is equivalent to that of an age that, as happened in the past, doesn't seem to care too much about reality anymore. A time plagued by fake news and half-truths that are either not denied or if exposed, don't bother anyone. A fertile ground, in fact, for lies and for fiction. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Volpi, for a lecture characteristically brilliant in its historical grasp, its originality, and its imaginative acuity. May I request um, the Secretary of the India International Center, Sri Kavalvali, retired Air Commodore, to propose the vote of thanks. Honorable Ambassador Shamsaran, President IIC, Dr. Jorge Volpi, keynote speaker for the evening. Shri N. N. Vora, Life Trustee, IAC. Dr. Minakshi Gopinath, Life Trustee of IAC. And <coughs> Professor Anil Sasabuddhe, Trustee of the IAC. Shri Ken Shri Vastav, Director, India International Center. Dr. Sudha Gopalakrishnan, Executive Director, IRD. Excellencies, esteemed delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I would like to congratulate our keynote speaker, Dr. Jorge Volpi, for his original and powerful insights into what constitutes the identity of the Latin America and how we may speak of its literature. I thank our President Ambassador Shamsaran for his opening remarks that set the tone for the conference Sri N. N. Vohra, Life Trustee, India International Center for taking out time to inaugurate the exhibition, Connected Histories, Shared Present, and for his thoughtful inaugural remarks. Our thanks to the Director, Sri K. N. Srivastava, and Dr. Sudha Gopalakrishnan, ED, IRD, for capturing the spirit in which the conference was conceived. Our gratitude to the Ambassadors and Head of Missions of Latin American and the Caribbean for the active interest they took in the conference and for sharing their ideas and loaning their artifacts to the enablers to put together the exhibition and film screenings. We thank the High Commission of Trinidad and Tobago and Embassy of Panama for, the, for facilitating the performances which we will witness and relish them in the two evenings to follow. We are also grateful for the support of the Ministry of External Affairs in particular, Secretary East Shri Saurabh Kumar, Additional Secretary LAC Division Shri G. V. Srinivas and Shri Anil Rai, Joint Secretary Coordination at the MEA. We thank the Indian missions in Latin America and the Caribbean for their suggestions and help with arrangements whenever needed. IC is also grateful to Professor Sonia Surbi Gupta, the conference squad convener. This conference would not have happened but for her knowledge and concern for every detail from identifying and approaching appropriate speakers to translating their papers from Spanish. We are also indebted to Ambassador R. Vishwanathan for drawing from his vast experience to give guidance at all points for this conference. Thanks are also due to the members of the organizing committee for giving their time and ideas to flesh out possibilities of the conference Ambassador Deepak Bhojwani, Ambassador De Dinesh Patnaik, Ms. Gloria Gangte, and Dr. Hifizur Rahman. It was a pleasure to work with ICCR, the Director General Ambassador Kumar Tuhin, Shri Chinmoy Naik, and Shri Rajiv Kumar for arranging the performances by the TASA Band from Trinidad and Tobacco and the Drance Troupe from Panama. I thank ICCR Program Directors Mr. Amit Sahai Mathur, 
Ms. Renu Prithyani and Mr. Rohan Nandan Goswami and Ms. Kavita Mittal and Ankit Sharma. I also congratulate the curatorial team led by Ms. Achinta Nair for the imagination and hard work that went into putting together the exhibition which we all saw in the evening. I thank Mr. Sanjeev Saklani of the Public Diplomacy Division for his advice. Last but not least, Mr. Shri N.H. Ramachandran, who has been a pillar of the IAC from the date of inception for extending himself beyond the call of duty. And I also thank all the esteemed members who are present here to take out the time in this evening and be with us. I am certain that the two days which are ahead with us are full of, will be enriching, enlightening and exciting. I also would like to inform that all the members that we have a cultural performance lined up in the evening at C.D. Deshmukh Auditorium, Maha Aksham. It's a Bharat Natyam performance choreographed by Justin McCarthy and his troupe. Thank you once again for this evening. So uh, we'd like in conclusion to honor our keynote speaker, Dr. Gopalakrishnan will present him the Angavastram.